Hey guys, it's Spire4 here and this is your optimization guide video to get the best latency out of your gaming mouse. I'm going to go over the best software settings and also some extra tweaks on Windows to make sure your mouse is running at its best performance. But before we move on to the software tweaks, we need to make sure that your mouse setup is correct on your desk to eliminate every chance of input latency. So first thing, we need to make sure our mouse USB cable is plugged to the latest generation ports on your motherboard. Go to the motherboard manual and make sure you plug your mouse to the red USB port or whatever the latest USB port shown on your manual. Tip number two is the USB dongle. This bad boy has to stay closer to your mouse from 20 to 30 centimeters and at its max distance it should look something like this. The closer your dongle to your mouse is going to ensure a stable pulling rate and please stop putting your phone next to your mouse pad. Not just your phone, any device that supports Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz. Even your router for example, make sure to put it somewhere else in the room. And the last tip of setting up your mouse is the battery health. Keep your mouse above 25% all the time. Most of the wireless mouse switch to power saving modes if they go under 20% and they they make the sensor performance weaker in purpose to keep your mouse alive a little bit longer. Always charge it before you start your gaming sessions. And now that we're done with setting up your mouse, let's move on to the software settings. And first thing we're starting with is your DPI. It's been proven that high DPI helps your sensor stay consistent with high pulling rates. And that automatically means you're getting a better latency. 1600 DPI is the sweet spot and most of the pro players play on this DPI. So if you're still playing on 400 DPI, yeah, you're trolling. Moving on to the pulling rate. Most mice nowadays have at least 1k pulling pulling rate and if you're still playing on 500 again you're trolling i do suggest playing on higher pulling rates like 2k 4k for example but it depends on the game actually if you have a bad pc you can't really play on higher pulling rates valorant for example is a game that supports raw input buffer when you turn on this option you can play on 8k with no issues in most systems but fortnite on the other hand if you play above 2k your fps is going to drop and it's not going to be a fun consistent gameplay at all so i highly recommend experiencing with your game and your setup and push the pulling rates up until you get consistent fps before we move on I want to mention that 99% of you are not subscribed and if you find my content entertaining and want to support me, liking the video is not a big deal either. And now moving on to the LOD, lift off distance. This basically means how far away the sensor needs to be from the mouse pad in order for it to stop capturing. Pro players usually play on the lowest possible and if you play on a high LOD, you're kind of weird my guy. So between low and medium LOD is personal preference, but please make sure you don't play on higher LOD. The next setting is ripple control. This one right here, for the love of God, just turn it off. Especially if you play FPS fast paced shooter games, this is going to introduce some latency and it's just going to make your experience too weird. Like your cursor is going to be smooth to the point you're going to feel like you're drawing inside the game. Next option is angle snapping. This one got very popular in the Valorant community back in 2022 and 2023. It basically helps your crosshair to stay in a straight line for crosshair placement. It's usually useful in Valorant and CSGO, but even some best aimers in the world don't use this option anymore. And I personally don't like it because sometimes you want to make some vertical micro adjustments and this setting won't let you do that and it's just gonna ruin your aim. If you have any Chinese mouse and in your software says competitive mode, make sure that mode is turned on all the time. And if you have an option called motion sync as well, make sure you turn it off with the best latency possible, but it does have some advantages. And if you wanna learn about that, I made a video about it last week, so make sure you watch it as well. Also, I forgot to mention something. Firmware updates is very important. Make sure to check for the latest firmware updates every few weeks because that fixes a lot of bugs with my sensors and overall improves performance of your mouse. And now that we're done with the software settings, let's move on to some extra tweaks on the windows if you already know any of this stuff i mentioned you're a smart and lucky person but unfortunately some other people are new to gaming now i want you to go to your windows insert shop mouse settings go to additional mouse settings pointer options and turn off enhanced pointer precision this is mouse acceleration and if you play with it on your aim is never going to be consistent go again and search shop power plan go back to power options and make sure it's at the highest performance go inside the plan and change advanced power settings go to usb settings usb selective and make sure it's disabled Disabled. This option is going to revoke the permission from Windows to turn off your mouse when it's being unused. Like let's say you went to the bathroom and you came back, Windows has already power saved your mouse and when you wake it up, there's going to be a huge latency at first and you don't want that, especially if you just sat down and you have to clutch the round. One more thing I forgot to mention, if you have RGB on your mouse, make sure to turn it off as well. It's also proven to lower the latency on keyboards and mice, just by a tiny bit. And if you think you learned something from this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to stay up to date with the hobby.